Aloha, this is your astrologer, Tom. And in this video, we're going to talk about a question that I get asked a lot as a professional astrologer. Are we compatible? Are we compatible? A variation on that question, what sign should I date? And also, oh, I found this person, met this person. Should I continue dating them? Well, those are bad questions for two reasons. And I'll get to each of those reasons in just a second. Isn't it interesting how one bad relationship can ruin a whole sign? So I'll also hear people say, oh, I'll never date, and they'll just insert a sign there. I'll never date, pick whatever the sign you, you want. I've heard pretty much all 12 of them at this point. And yet, it's it's just, that's not an empowering way to look at this, right? The way that I look at astrology is beyond just the, oh, there's oh compatibility, oh, how, how nice. No, we're going to go do something with it to create the fulfilling relationships that we want. So why are these, are we, why is, are we compatible? What signs should I date? Should I continue dating this person? Why are they bad questions? The first reason is because all signs can actually work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, but we're so different. You know, these signs are just, they're just not compatible. No, 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 no. There is a way to work with each of those energies because we have them all inside of us. If you look at a natal chart, we have every sign within us. And in an area of life, because that's what the houses are, then we have we have that sign that that somebody is refusing to date. That sign exists in an area of life. And so if they're not harmonized with that sign, that area of life can equally be out of whack. OK, so a better question that I like to ask, or at, at least I, I say to my clients, I say, you know, why don't you find somebody that the two of you want to be together and then come to me when you're ready to be together. Because I would rather you say, Hey, we want to be together. How do we create a fulfilling relationship? And so, you know, if you're wondering, well, how can signs, all the signs actually work, right? It really comes down to a couple of themes that I, that I notice here. Okay. One is when two people come together and I, what I do is I, one of the things that I like to do is I like to break down the, the 10 planets, so Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and figure out from the signs that those planets are in what element they 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 are. And then I figure out, okay, what I've noticed between the uh, the two people in the relationship is either, this is, it, it's either that they're both very strong in the same elements, okay, in which case, they're building upon the, the foundation they have there together, and they're learning the other elements. For, you know, they're just learning the other elements together as part of their relationship. Okay. Or they are opposite in elements, and they're learning the other elements from their partner, basically, and being together. And they're learning how to harmonize the elements together because, because of strengths in in one versus the other and if you if you if you want to dive further into elements and signs i have a just a, a few videos here on youtube um about uh take going through each of the elements and the signs and, and and what they represent that type of thing i come back to the element though right so so i look at um I, I look at basically the count of the planets in those elements and you can see a pattern it's usually either disproportionately similar or disproportionately different Right. So it's either they are very much the same elements and they're learning the opposite ones together, or one is strong in one set of elements, one is strong as in, in another. Okay. It's very, very common for that to happen. And so what, what I then do is, is help them navigate and, and actually guide how to do that, that, uh, how, how to bring that, that lesson into their relationship. The other thing is, how can all signs work is because. There's a difference between repeating a pattern and applying the lessons. So for example, if somebody gets with one particular sign, uh, zodiac sign, and they just have, they, they might date several of them or whatever, and they just eventually go, you know what? I'm just not going to date that sign anymore. That, that can happen. Sometimes it could just happen with one bad relationship with that sign. And what's interesting is I've seen it where yeah, there might be another person of that same sign that comes into their life and they go and they're like, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to do it. I'm like, well, what is it that you want in a relationship? 
He's like, well, I, you know, I don't want the same stuff I had before. And if it's a person, no, 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 it doesn't work that way necessarily that it's the same sign. Now, if you've repeated the same themes between partners that had the same sign, then you didn't get the lessons. I mean, I'm pretty much a no sugar coating astrologer. I tell you how things are. There is a difference between repeating a pattern versus applying the lessons. There are some people that are like, oh my gosh, this is the third blah, blah, blah sign that I'm dating. And they're like, should I be with this person? I'm like, well, again, I don't like to answer that question because I go, well, okay, are you repeating the pattern? Are you doing what you did in the relationships before? Or are you taking who you've become and the lessons that you got from those relationships and now you have a chance to apply it with a partner? Because here's the thing. With the other things that are on in a chart, you could have the same zodiac sign and they could be a totally different person. And if they're just looking at the sun sign, the zodiac sign, they're going to miss a lot of opportunity. Okay, so these are the things that I like to, to keep in mind when it, when it comes down to, okay, ways that all signs can work. The second reason why I think asking compatibility is, is bad is because the zodiac sign is your sun sign. It, it represents potential. It's probably, it's one of the fewer things in the chart, like one of the things in the chart that's really the least of who you are. It's, it's your potential and how you're meant to shine and what you're growing into and just a number of different things. It, it, it's, it's less about how things necessarily are. Now, it's important for, hey, if you want a long-term relationship, we got to understand the sun of each person in the relationship because we have to understand what's, what's going to be part of that fulfilling path and what's going to help you shine, you know, so you can shine together. And you're more than your sun sign, right? You're more than your sun sign. So when people just go, oh... I'm this sun sign, they're that sun sign. Should we be together? You know, it 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 doesn't make any sense to me. What I would rather do is look at a few other things. So when couples come to me, I care less about their sun signs. I do care about it from a long-term perspective, just like I care about a few other things in the chart. But in terms of compatibility, I like to look at the moon sign as one thing because that's how we emotionally relate, how somebody perceives time. Okay, so if you're like, well, how come that person, that person likes to sleep in late, that person likes to get up early, I like to pay more attention to the moon. Because uh, I also want to know, from an emotional perspective, is one person going to come off cold to the other? Is one person going to come off too touchy feely or overbearing? Or, you know, to what extreme, you know, might it go so that we can emotionally relate together? Okay. The other one is that Mercury signs because that's how you communicate, whether or not you understand each other when you talk, or really if you communicate differently, recognizing how the other person communicates so that you can relate together, okay? The Mercury sign is, uh, Mercury doesn't move too far from the sun. So generally, in a, I mean, in a chart, the Mercury sign is either going to be their zodiac sign or the one before or the one after, okay? So uh, it, it can be, so you could actually meet somebody with the same sun sign, two different, and have two different, they have two different Mercuries. So it's important that I, I look at the relationship between your Mercury and your partner's Mercury to understand how you communicate. The other one is Venus, right? We, which explains money and love. And how does your partner express and receive love? How does your partner make and spend money? All things that are important in a relationship all things that are important in a relationship. And there's also Mars, which is motivations and excitement and actions. I tend to look at what are called the personal planets, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, much more um, related to who the individual is because they're the fastest moving. And uh, I also look at something, I don't know anybody else that really looks at this, that's known as the fifth, seventh, and eighth house cusps, but I look at it from the perspective of how the person meets somebody from the fifth how they consummate a relationship with the seventh and then how they grow together in the eighth. Okay. So, you know, it shows me how they meet, how they date, how they'll be in a relationship. And basically if you've ever been with a partner who changes after you consummate the relationship, it's because of this. It's because the energy moves from a fifth house energy to a seventh house energy, seventh and eighth blending together. And so, you know, at the beginning, at the early stages, the quote unquote honeymoon phase, right? A lot more fifth house going on, a little bit of seventh coming in, you know, but I'll hear people, people will be like, um, I don't know if that person has long-term potential. I'm like, well, wait a minute. 
And then we look at the chart and we're like, oh, okay, it's because you're not seeing this expression, the seventh and eighth expression in the fifth house time that you're, you're with them right now. Like, yeah. Or they, they'll, um, they'll discount the potential because the, 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 the person is actually exemplifying what stability in a relationship might be, but maybe the fifth house energy is just more fun and laid back. And so then they're just, they're missing. So that what ends up happening is people get in their own way. They end up getting in their own way. The, the fifth, the seventh and eighth house, if, if the energies between those houses are different, like significantly different, you could either have a lot of initial relationships that fizzle out and don't go anywhere, or you can have a lot of potential, but maybe not ones that you actually start pursuing because you're like, you see the long-term potential, but the in the now moment just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't line up. So, you know, so really, how do you use astrology in a relationship then? I mean, I mean, basically, I mean, what I do with couples is we, we, I actually look at their charts and, and a lot of astrology is blending and timing and, and recognizing how the energies blend. I, I can't possibly, I mean, a chart doesn't repeat for 26,000 years. And even then the, you know, fixed stars move and all sorts of things. So it's, it's different. I, I can't possibly put all combinations, you know, in, in something, you know, that, that explains, okay, well, if you have this and your partner has this and do this, however, what I do in my readings is, is I, is I look at each person's chart and then help you navigate the thing that, that you have going on. I can also do, um, chart reviews where I'll look at your chart, your partner's chart and give you just, you know, maybe either an audio or video recording, whatever, whatever makes sense for the situation, uh, or write something up for you and explain how these energies play out. So in, in less of an interactive, but still very personal. And then the other thing is I have my book avatar attraction. And in that book, I put a lot of information. I, I also put information as to how to find this partner. Cause what ends up happening is people, uh, they'll come to me after the fact, right? They'll say, Oh, I found this person. Oh, they're this sign, you know, Oh, they're, they have this in their chart. Should we be together? And I'm like, well, let's talk about what those energies are, but really it's a lot easier if you just get, if you just follow the avatar attraction process that I have in a book to just bring the person in who has exactly what it is, that's going to be the most fulfilling to you to begin with and, and is the easiest to get along with. Right. Um, and, and yes, there is, there is growth that comes in a relationship. That's just what happens. Right. Uh, so, um, these are the, the three ways that I, that I tend to help people. I, I don't answer compatibility questions. Everybody can be compatible with anybody, everybody else. The real question, in addition to, okay, how can you make it work is what do you want in the relationship? Right? So if you have somebody who has a bunch of planets in, let's say the air element, and they're just, they're up early, they're, they're moving around they're you know, they want to travel, they, they don't sit still. And if you have a lot of planets in earth and you're just like, I just, I don't, I get up slower. I take my time. I want to be home on the weekends. Well, if you go, well, okay, that is there a way to make it compatible? Yes, of course. We could talk through what does each person need and, and how to fulfill that. And if you're just like, I don't want to be doing the things the air element wants to do. Well, it's better than to just draw in a person who has similar energies to yours, right? And then together you 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 blend them together. And so that's that's the difference with, with avatar attraction, is you're actually you're actually drawing that person in. You're attracting them to you in a way that would be harmonious. And I put a ton of astrology in here, okay? Because, because what we want to do is to be aware of what are the energies that are actually going to be fulfilling to you. And then when you meet somebody, the interesting thing is it all makes sense when we actually look at the charts. When, when people come to me and they have a recognition of, okay, they're going to be together. And we look at the charts, everything just falls into place and makes sense. And they understand the lessons they got from their previous relationships. And they understand why this one's going to be different. And, and even if things look similar on the surface, the moon way more important. I've known people that they leave one relationship for the sun sign and they get with the same person or sorry, the same sign with a different person. 
but they have vastly different moons between the two partners. So let's say there's an air, they, they're both the same air sign, sun sign, and yet one partner had an air moon and one partner had an earth moon. Those partners are going to be very different and you can have a much more fulfilling relationship perhaps with, with one moon over the other. Okay. So those other planets are just, are, are important. I break down that. I also break down the fifth, seventh and eighth house stuff. And I also break down how the energies, how, how the signs really begin to see their partner. And that's important because a partner is a reflection. A partner is, uh, basically you're growing together. And so I look at empowering astrology. I look at what, what do we do to bring um, ourselves more in touch with who we truly are and how do we benefit, um, how do we benefit together in, in, in a relationship? Okay. So, I mean, I'll leave links in the description below. You can get the book avatar attraction at, at avatar attraction.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, if you want to schedule a reading, you can do that. If you want a chart review, I'll just leave all the links in the description below. And, uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, aloha, ahui ho. I'll talk with you again soon. Take care.